Hey everyone, it's Laura here from makingcardsisun.com and welcome to another card making video tutorial. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to make an adorable card featuring the magic picture changer, the die cut set from Lawn Fawn, along with their O Gnome stamp set. Let's get started. For this magic picture changer card, I am going to be doing a lot of masking, stamping, coloring and die cutting. I'm starting out with this adorable gnome stamp in the speech bubble from the O Gnome stamp set from Lawn Fawn. I positioned that and used my die cut to create this magic picture changer to position my stamps perfectly. I picked up the stamps with my Misty tool then I inked them up using Memento Tuxedo Black ink and next I stamped these two stamps once again on some masking paper and I am cutting these out with my EK Success Cutter B scissors. I'm going to remove the backer sheet and then I am adhering the mask on top of my stamped images. You always have to stamp the images you want to have in the front first and then stamp the images that you want to have behind um, the images that are in the front. So in that case, next I am lining up the flower and the um, mushroom perfectly. So I am going to stamp these using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink as well. And then I created those masks and I am adhering them on top of the stamped images. By the way, I am stamping all of my images on Nina Solar White 110 pound heavy cardstock since that, in my opinion, works best for Copic coloring um, along with the Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. So I stamped that large mushroom over there, then I am covering it up with my mask and next it's time to do even more masking and some ink blending as well. I have a strip of masking paper over here and I am figuring out where I'll be adhering that to create the grass and the sky for this card. So I'm using that die over there to line that up perfectly and then I am using Twisted Citron Distress Oxide ink to ink blend the grass. I think that this is such a gorgeous color. I love to use this to create grass along with the Mode Lawn Distress Oxide ink which is also a perfect grass green. I'm removing that mask carefully since I don't want to remove the other masks. And then I'm just using the other side of that masking paper to mask off the grass and then I can ink blend the sky. So since this is just a straight line, it's really easy to line up that mask perfectly. If you don't have masking paper, don't worry, you can also use a post-it note or you could even use copy paper and then adhere your mask with some washi tape. For the sky, I am using Tumble Glass Distress Oxide Ink and I just absolutely love to use these oxide inks. I've said it many times before, but I just love to work with these. I um, like them more than the original Distress Inks. I mean, I also like the original Distress Inks, but I think that the Distress Oxide Inks just blend a little easier than the original ones. Now that I steamed all of my images, it's time to color them using Copic sketch markers. For the mushrooms, I'm using R29, R24 and R22. Then next for my flower, I'm using YG67 and YG23. For the actual flower, I'm using Y19 along with Y13 and I'm also using E57 and E55. To color the rest of the mushrooms, I am using E50 and E53. So first I used E53 and then I used E50 to add the shading. For my gnome skin, I am using E30 and E0000. As you can see, first I used E50, but that was too light, so I went in with the E30 marker. 
For his beard, I'm using the N0 marker along with the Colorless Blender to blend that out just to create some really soft and subtle shading. For his belt and shoes, I used N4 along with the N1 marker. And then for his cap, I'm using R29, R24 and R22 just like I did for the mushrooms. For his blue little outfit, I'm using B37, B14, and B12. And then for the centerpiece of his belt, I'm using Y19 along with Y13. For his trousers, I'm using E57 and E55. So there you have this first piece of our magic picture changer. The O Gnome stamp set comes with these adorable little smiley faces, so I'm using them on these mushrooms just to add a little bit of extra cuteness to this card. Next I'm going to create the second piece of the magic picture changer. For that I stamped the little female gnome and then I covered that up with masking paper and then I'm just going to repeat all of those same steps except that I'm using different images this time. I'm using my die cut again to line these stamps up perfectly then I can pick them up using my misty tool and stamp them using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. That little cake stamp over there is from the Beam Me Up stamp set from Lawn Fawn. Lately I really like to combine different Lawn Fawn stamp sets to create really adorable scenes and very unique scenes as well. So after masking and stamping this piece it's time to um, add color. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm using that same strip of masking paper to color the grass and the sky. Later in the video I'll be creating a frame for this magic picture changer using the add-on die cut set. So then you won't be seeing the uh, distress oxide ink that goes all the way to the edges of this cardstock. For this little gnome's hair I'm using E27, E57 and E55. I'm keeping this coloring very simple, very basic since these are such um, small images. However, I do like to use two or three shades to add some shading and highlights. So for this mushroom, I use the same shades of red and then I colored the flower using the exact same Copic markers. I also use the same markers to color her skin and her little cap. So for her dress I'm also using B37, B14 and B12 and these three shades of blue really work together beautifully. They blend effortlessly. For her little belt or that little um, strap over there I'm using R29 and R22 uh, and I also used R24 by the way. I stamped a teeny tiny little heart on her apron from the Be Me Up stamp set from Lawn Fawn and I'm coloring that using R29, R24 and R22. Going to color the icing on this cake using RV10 and RV0000. Then I am stamping this little gift inside the speech bubble on the first piece of our magic picture changer. I'm coloring that using Y19 and Y13. So I just used two shades of yellow to color that. To color that little bow I am using RV10 I think. Yeah this is RV10. And I just really love how that turned out. It looks like the gnome is saying, here I have a little gift for you. And then, you know, when you use the magic picture changer, the little girl gnome got her gift and her cake. Okay, so now that I colored all of these images, it's time to die cut them using the magic picture changer dies from Lanthon. I am die cutting the two main panels. I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine to do so. 
and then I am going to fold the biggest piece along the scored lines with my bone folder. I'm also going to fold those little tabs on the sides um, in the back side of the die. And then once I did that, I can easily um, apply some tape adhesive to both sides. As you can see, I'm also using my bone folder just to um, really make a nice crease and to fold everything nicely. My um, tape adhesive is from Tonic, it's from their Craft Perfect uh, range, but it's actually a little bit too wide, so I'm just using my uh, scissors to cut that a little bit smaller and then I can just move on perfectly. Using my bone folder just to burnish that adhesive to make sure it will be nice and sticky and then I'm going to um, apply the adhesive on the other side of that main panel. Next I'm going to peel off the backer sheets on the inside of this panel and then I can close that up. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit for you guys so you can see that. So I'm closing that up, making sure it's adhered nicely using my bone folder to burnish that. And then I am going to apply some kitchen flour um, all over this magic picture changer. This is a tip that I learned from Callie Marie from L'Enfant. And uh, in her video, she said that kitchen flour or baby powder, or you know, like the Martha Stewart powder tool or the powder bag, is like the magic key to interactive slider cards because it makes everything slide nicely. Once I did that, it's time to slide the tap into the main pocket and then I'm going to insert all of the tabs into the slots. So I'm going to insert the first tab into the first slot and then the second slot into the second tab and so on until I inserted all of these. This was the first time I created my magic picture changer and I honestly thought that it would have been harder to create this because when I see those interactive cards I'm always just blown away and I'm like oh no I'm never going to be able to do that um, but before I actually give them a shot, I watch a lot of video tutorials and then I try it myself. Okay, so next it's time to finish off this magic picture changer. I'm going to flip my main panel over and then I am going to remove the backer sheet so I can adhere the moving piece between the two traps. So you have to make sure that it's perfectly lined up before you close up your main panel. And then as you can see, you can pull that little tap over there and then you have a beautiful magic picture changer. I'm going to decorate the front of the magic picture changer using the add-on dies um, from L'Enfant along with the Spring Fling Petite Paper Pack from L'Enfant. I die cut the large frame from the add-on die cut set out of some pattern paper and then I'm using the small frame from the Magic Picture Changer die cut set out of some white cardstock. I'm also going to die cut that little pull tab piece from the add-on die cut set out of the same pattern paper. And I'm making sure I am saving those little um, those negative pieces from the die um, because there's a little die cut to finish up the, the P. So there's like this little inside piece that is still left in the die. So I'm just using my picker to pick that out. So as you can see, I fold it along the lines of my little tap and then I'm going to adhere it all together. First, I'm going to adhere my white frame on top of my pattern paper frame using my ATG from Scotch. And this is very easy to line up perfectly since these dies were designed to be used together. 
Before I'm going to adhere this frame on top of my magic picture changer, I am going to put adhesive on corner to corner. So I am using a pencil just to draw those lines and then I can apply my adhesive. This is also a trick that I learned from Kelly Marie, by the way, because you want to make sure that you don't put too much adhesive on there or otherwise your magic picture changer won't be able to change. Okay, so I'm going to adhere the little pull tap on, on my little stopper there. And I'm using my ATG from Scotch along with my Tonic Nouveau Smooth Precision Glue Pen. So I'm just going to line it up perfectly in the center. Then I am pressing that down gently to make sure it's adhered perfectly. And then I'm going to adhere that tiny little piece over there to finish off the letter P. So there we go. Now that my magic picture changer is done, I'm going to create a sentiment. I used the fancy wavy banners die cut set from Lawn Fawn to die cut this white banner out of some white Nina cardstock. Then I'm going to die cut one more banner using some pattern paper and this one has a stitched edge. So I'm going to stamp my sentiment that says happy birthday. This is from the wavy banner greeting stamp set from Long Farm, and I'm stamping that birthday sentiment using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Then I'm using some foam squares to finish off my banner sentiment. I'm going to adhere the white on top of the pattern paper and then finally I'm going to adhere the banner on top of my magic picture changer making sure that it doesn't touch the colored images because otherwise your magic picture changer won't be able to move. Finally, I'm doing some more die cutting. I am using the large stitched rectangles die cut set from Lawn Fawn to die cut a rectangle out of white cardstock and then I am using the largest rectangle to die cut uh, a rectangle out of some spring fling patterned paper from Lawn Fawn. I just absolutely love to work with this paper pad. I love these patterns so much and I think that interactive cards are a great way to use pattern paper because once I started making more interactive cards like the pop-up cards and then the magic picture changer, I actually started using my pattern paper. So I think that's a really um, great thing. I'm adhering this large piece of pattern paper to a standard size A2 card using my ATG from Scotch and then I'm using some double-sided um, foam tape from Scotch to adhere the magic picture changer to this pattern paper. And there you go, so that finishes off this card. I'm just going to show you how this card works so you can Pull that tap over there and then your image your image will change and I think that's just fantastic such a great design from Lawn Fawn. So that finishes up this card thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon bye bye.